Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm going to be talking about my initial thoughts on Barefoot Gen, a cartoon story of Hiroshima by Kaiji Nakazawa, Volume 1. Content notes for bullying, suicide, war, atomic bomb, massive fire, melting skin, and watching your family die. Not spoilers, as it is covered in the introduction. It struck me as more graphic than most shonen manga I've read. First published in 1972, this English version was translated and published in 2004 by Kazuko Futakuchi, Kyoko Nishita, George Stenson, Alan Gleason, Libby Hopkins, and Hiromi Matsuka. There is an introduction from Art Spiegelman, copyright 1990. There is also an introduction from the author that outlined his background as well as the history of efforts to translate Barefoot Gen for international publication. It's even been translated into Esperanto. Pulling from Kaiji Nakazawa's bio on Goodreads, quote, he was born in Hiroshima and was in the city when it was destroyed by an atomic bomb in 1945. All of his family members who had not evacuated died as a result of the explosion after they became trapped under the debris of their house, except for his mother, as well as an infant sister, who died several weeks afterwards. In 1961, Nakazawa moved to Tokyo to become a full-time cartoonist and produced short pieces for manga anthologies such as Shonen Gaho, Shonen King, and Bakura. Following the death of his mother in 1966, Nakazawa returned to his memories of the destruction of Hiroshima and began to express them in his story, Struck by Black Rain. The first of a series of five books was a historical story of Hiroshima survivors involved in the post-war black market. Nakazawa chose to portray his own experience directly in the 1972 story Or Wa Mita, published in Monthly Shonen Jump. The story was translated into English and republished as a one-shot comic book by Edu Comics as I Saw It. Immediately after completing I Saw It, Nakazawa began his major work, Hadashi no Gen, Barefoot Gen. The series, which eventually, filled, which eventually filled 10 volumes, was based on the same events as I Saw It, but fictionalized with the young Gen as a stand-in for the author. Barefoot Jen depicted the bombing and its aftermath in graphic detail, with Jen's experience being even more harrowing than Nakazawa's own. It also turned a critical eye on the militarization of Japanese society during World War II and on the sometimes abusive dynamics of the traditional family. Barefoot Jen was adopted into two animated films and a live-action TV drama. Nakazawa announced his retirement in September 2009, citing deteriorating diabetes and cataract conditions. He canceled plans for a Barefoot Gen sequel. In September 2010, Nakazawa was diagnosed with lung cancer, and in July 2011, metastasis from lung cancer was found. He died on December 19, 2012. End quote. What keywords came to mind while I was reading this book? Family, resistance, hunger, military, racism, and kamikaze. The official synopsis is, quote, This harrowing story of Hiroshima was one of the original Japanese manga series. New and unabridged, this is an all-new translation of the author's first-person experience of Hiroshima and its aftermath, and is a reminder of the suffering war brings to innocent people. Its emotions and experience speak to children and adults everywhere. Volume 1 of this 10-part series details the events leading up to and immediately following the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. End quote. I originally picked up Barefoot Jen due to two particular reviews of Town of Union Calm, Country of Cherry Blossoms by Fumio Kono that highlighted that most manga that deal with World War II focus exclusively on the dropping of the bomb. Check out my review for more details there. Barefoot Jen Volume 1 does provide a slightly wider view of Japan during World War II, namely from the perspective of a family resisting the war. The bomb doesn't actually fall until fairly late in the book. Up until that point, we see Jen's father being imprisoned, their entire family being ostracized as traitors, the forced relocation and labor of Koreans, and the way the war stole away so many young men. As far as writing an art goes, I'm not an expert on 70s manga, but it does feel like it's from a different time. That I suspect has to do with its age. Although it being shonen might have been a bit to blame as well. Not that that made it entirely unreadable or anything close, but it's worth noting. 
There's a lot of over-the-top comedy, drama, and sweating faces. The way Nakazawa is trying to balance the extreme hardship that Jen's family is experiencing with the silliness that children get up to works pretty well. Looking at how gender and sexuality were represented in this volume, I honestly didn't go into it expecting much. That said, since the main character is very young, he wasn't particularly invested in heterosexuality. Gender is binary, but the rest of Jen's family are generally treated equally without too much regard for gender. So that was rather nice. Racism, or at least the othering of people of other nations, did come up more than your average manga, although that isn't particularly high, because there was, as I already mentioned, some representation of the way Korean people were forcibly relocated and put to work. There's also a very nice Korean man who helps Jin's family when he can. Class, in particular, extreme poverty, is central to Jen's family's existence. My feeling is that disability doesn't show up in this particular volume, although I assume that many people are going to be disabled and made ill by the bomb dropping, so I suspect that particular representation will sadly increase. Overall, I would rate this pretty highly at four stars out of five. By all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.